Welcome. This talk was recorded at the Milwaukee School of Engineering, Wisconsin, USA, June 2013. My name is Bharatwaj Bart Muthuswamy. I'm an assistant professor of electrical engineering at MSOE. I got my BS, MS, and PhD degrees from Cal, the University of California, Berkeley. I was advised by Dr. Leon Chua and co-advised by Dr. Praveen Waraya. Many thanks to Ferenc Kovac for funding me throughout my tenure at Cal. My areas of interest are nonlinear dynamical systems, embedded systems, and of course education. Please visit my website for details. Before I begin, I would like to thank two of my colleagues from MSOE, Dr. Yohan Yevtej and Dr. General Thomas. Over my four years at MSOE, they have been very encouraging and have served as a treasure trove of knowledge. Thanks, guys. Okay, so this talk is about how to think and learn. I would like to instill some general ideas instead of talking about my research. And the vehicle I would like to use for this are Maxwell's equations. And the reason why I'm doing this talk is there are various reasons actually, but primarily two. Number one, I couldn't find any talk about this particular subject. Google searching the title didn't reveal anything as of June 2013. Second, the reason why I'm using Maxwell's equations is because first of all I'm in EE so I'll talk about EE related stuff but you will hopefully see that these are ideas of thinking and learning are general however mentioning Maxwell's equations seems to instill some kind of misplaced fear in students as an orthogonal example orthogonal in the sense uh, when I gave a talk at Chennai Public School in August 2012 the talk was on chaotic circuits but although the feedback from the students was very good, a common theme in the feedback I got was that my talk was on combining physics and mathematics, which it was. And students mentioned that this is, these are two subjects that many dreaded and few loved. So the point of this talk is that if we can think and learn, then there is no need to be afraid of the unknown. Now, let me mention my research so you can see that I have some qualifications as an EE. This is all the different stuff I work on. Visualizing my work in chaos actually leads to pretty pictures like the one shown here from Mathematica simulations. However, as promised, this talk is not about my research. Although you could say that the material in this talk is most closely related to my research on practical ministry. So, what are, how is this talk organized and what are the prereqs for understanding this talk? Technically, we need a first course in vector algebra, but there is a star under number one because this is really optional. However, number two, which is our willingness to think and learn, is not optional. We will first go through a brief history of Maxwell's equations. It is very important to read the original works of the authors because not only is it original material, but it also leads to fascinating insights into their way of thinking and also how paper publications have changed over the last 150 years in uh, especially classic topics. Next, we will think and learn about Maxwell's equations, about one particular Maxwell equation uh, because of time constraints. Finally, we will look into how to apply the ideas in this talk to thinking and learning in general. So, let us start with a brief history of Maxwell's equations. Although there are other scientists, example Orsted, who played pivotal roles in the study of electricity and magnetism, we will briefly talk about Michael Faraday. Faraday's work is remarkable in the sense that although he lacked formal mathematical training, he was an excellent experimentalist. Nowhere is this more evident than Faraday's diaries that are available for purchase from www.faradaysdiary.com. He maintained a meticulous record of his work for over 30 years. His achievements over a wide time period are indicated in the 10 years, uh, 10 year time gap between his contributions to electromagnetism. You should purchase Faraday's diaries and also the book Remarkable Physicists. This is a good time to clarify my notation. This square brackets means references and you can find a list of references at the end of slides. And this book Remarkable Physicists is well worth uh, money and also time spent reading. The person, however, who packaged electricity and magnetism into one field called the electromagnetic field was the great 
James Clerk Maxwell. So, from Maxwell's treatise that can also be downloaded from the internet, he used the words electromagnetic field for the first time. Uh, this is on from page 460 of his classic work that was published actually in 1865. And also from his work is uh, what is evident is his humble nature and how he's thanking Michael Faraday among other scientists. Finally, what's interesting from his work is Maxwell did not have access to vectors. So he used coordinate systems. In other words, excuse me, he used 20 variables and he had 20 equations that described his beautiful theory. So the vector notation that is commonly used in many textbooks nowadays is due to the work of Gibbs and Heaviside. So that's what we will be using in this talk. So let's look at that. Here are Maxwell's equations reformulated using vector notation. The meaning of these quantities will become clear later in the presentation. For now, this is the differential form of Maxwell's equations. I have shown one integral form and for, and for some of you, this may be familiar as Gauss's law. Now, there is also a rediscovery of work by Grassmann and Clifford nowadays on a technique called geometric algebra that lets us package Maxwell's equations into one equation. Many thanks to Jovan for enlightening me on this concept. I'm in the process of learning more about this technique and I'll not discuss his approach in this talk. In fact, I don't even know if we have a square symbol here or we have to use the del operator. Anyway, let us now talk about the form of Maxwell's equations in the process introduce the ideas of thinking and learning. Okay, thinking. First, let us try and understand what the equations mean. Note that we will do this in English, although you could do this in any language. However, the actual work of solving problems is going to be done in mathematics later. First, let us think about the electric field around a positive charge. You know this probably from physics. Now, Consider the first of Maxwell's equations in differential form and integral form. Again, this is Gauss's law. Basically, the first of Maxwell's equations incorporates the information that charges are like faucets. They are sources of electric field. Let us look at the different quantities and units. Electric flux density D, that's a vector. Units are coulombs per meter squared. It's a density, rho, charge density, electric field E, volt per meter, epsilon naught is a constant called the permittivity of free space, n hat is a unit normal vector and what these two quantities mean will become clear when we do an example. Uh, Q enclosed is the charge enclosed. So, again, these quantities will become more clear oops these quantities will become more clear when you do a problem however the electric flux density is basically the number of electric field lines passing through a given cross-sectional area more the field lines more dense is the electric field now what about the mathematical operation of divergence this is the generalization of the dot product and very importantly, it provides the glue that basically says that charges are like faucets. That is, electric fields diverge from charges. Now, let us look at the second of Maxwell's equations that I prematurely neglected. Uh, think about the magnetic field around a stationary bar magnet. Yeah? You can see how the magnetic field lines close in on themselves. You may be familiar with the classic experiment of iron flakes, when you put them around a bar magnet, they follow this characteristic uh, path. Now, think about the second of Maxwell's equations. Again, we'll only cover this equation in differential form, but it basically says that the divergence of the B field or the magnetic flux density units Tesla is zero. Looking at this picture, it's obvious that this field is not like a faucet, yeah, the field lines close in on themselves, so it means that there is no divergence. 
Now, that was not too bad. Well, we just discussed electrostatics and magnetostatics. But now, let us talk about dynamics. That is what happens when we move a bar magnet. Now, first of all, notice the negative sign. So what it basically says is, suppose I have a, a coil of wire and I move the a magnet in this direction. It basically says that the current, there is a current induced in this coil of wire and this induced current generates a magnetic field that opposes this magnetic field. How do we know that? The right hand rule. If we curl the fingers of our right hand in the direction of current, then the thumb points in the direction of the generated field which opposes this magnetic field. And it turns out that the third of Maxwell's equations precisely incorporates this, incorporates this phenomenon. And what's interesting is it says that the rate of change of uh, magnetic flux density, which is due to the motion of this bar magnet, is equivalent to the curl of the E field and this generated field opposes this uh, field of the bar, ma bar magnet, excuse me, and that's evident due to the negative sign. Now, as far as the units are concerned, you're already familiar with B, the magnetic flux density, the units Tesla, E is the electric field intensity, units volts per meter. Also notice on the left-hand side, we have this curl that I mentioned and this curl is the generalization of the cross power. That is we have a vector on the left hand side of the equation. We also have a vector on the right hand side. Rate of change of B vector. Notice also how we have a partial derivative. B is a function of several variables. We will not get into the details of these partial derivatives in this presentation due to the lack of time. Please refer to the electromagnetism textbooks uh, in the references at the end of the slides for further for further information. Now, for Maxwell's triumph in many ways, let's look at the last of Maxwell's equations, which basically says how, so the third of Maxwell's equations shows how a changing magnetic field can give rise to an electric field. The fourth of Maxwell's equations is the dual of this. That is, that is it says how changing electric fields can induce magnetic fields. Now, as discovered by Orsted, if you have a long straight wire carrying current and you bring a compass uh, close to this wire, a magnetic compass, its needle deflects. And that's given by this expression. That is, J is the electric current density, units amps per meter squared. Mu naught is a constant, which is called uh, the permeability of phase space. So this induces a magnetic field. H is the magnetic field intensity, uh, the dual of E, or the electric field intensity. The units of H are amps per meter. But this is not what the genius of Maxwell is. The genius of Maxwell is that he figured out that there could be a way to induce this H. And that is this concept of displacement current, which is very evident in when you charge uh, for instance, a, cap uh, a capacitor, that is, this rate of change of electric flux density. Again, we will not get into too many details of uh, these equation, of this equation in this talk. However, the point of thinking about Maxwell's equations, you should not just blindly memorize these formulae. Like I always like to say, there are no formulae, there are only concepts that lead to ma mathematical expressions which become formulae in your head after enough practice. So, speaking about practice, let's talk about how do how do we like how do we learn about Maxwell's equations? Do we really understand Maxwell's equations? And for that, we need to look at problems. So, let's look at this one. So, the problem says consider an electric field E, uh, which is given by E naught times x hat, where E naught is a constant. The flux through the shaded area due to this field is what? And we have uh, only one choice is correct. So let us now discuss how to solve, 
how to solve this problem. Let's commence, uh, not complete the learning part. Notice I say commence because solving one problem may not help us understand Maxwell's equations. Depending on a lot of expert, level of expertise, you may have to solve hundreds of problems. And obviously, this is not related to Maxwell's equation. Uh, it could be complex numbers, whatever, right? Bottom line is, don't be afraid to practice. So let us try and solve the problem post. So let's be mindful and let us, uh, before we come, start like blindly solving the problem, let us ask ourselves questions. Question, first of all, what are the four Maxwell's equations to be used? <clears throat> if we think about it, it's Gauss's law. Because why? We have a constant electric field. Not only that, He's asking us for the flux, and since it's E field, he's asking us for the a constant E field. The problem is asking us for the electric flux. And aha, in Gauss's law, then this will tell us if the differential form and integral form, it's integral form because the integral form gives us, and I forgot to mention this earlier, the flux. This quantity, no, I did mention the flux. I just uh, I told you the flux, the electric flux is the number of electric field lines passing through a given cross-sectional area, what I forgot to mention is that the electric flux is given exactly by this quantity. So we will basically use the integral form of Gauss's law. Now how do we compute the quantity on the right hand side? Well, uh, vector algebra. So we know that the dot product of the two vectors is given by the magnitude, uh, the product of the magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. Notice the red colored font, that is, I choose the normal vector in the direction of the E field. The E field is in the direction of the unit normal, uh, or the, sorry, it's in the direction along the x-axis. So this is the normal I choose. So the angle between the E field and this unit normal is zero degrees. Now, Substituting for the E field is E naught times X hat. E naught is a constant, so that pops out of the integral. Magnitude of X hat, X hat is a unit vector is one. Magnitude of N hat is one. Cosine of zero degrees is one. So all it is is this surface area, the outward area. So that's given by the cross product of your, from your basic algebra course of these two vectors. This vector and this vector, notice the order. Again, use the right hand rule. Uh, to determine the direction, quote unquote, of the area. So that's given by the determinant here. And then you take the magnitude of the area. And so basically what we get is E naught A squared and the units of flux are volt meter. Now, that wasn't very bad, was it? Uh, what is very interesting about this problem, the source of this problem is the highly competitive Indian Institute of Technology, Indian Institute of Technology, excuse me, general uh, joint entrance examination, uh, IIT JEE. It's from the IIT JEE 2011 physics entrance exam. It's supposed to be highly challenging. And it is, if you don't understand the concept, you're not mindful, you're not motivated, and you didn't practice enough, or, and we, or we didn't practice enough problems. Wow, that was a lot of fun. And we, that is, we were able to solve a challenging IIT problem. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, so let's conclude the talk. We're running out of time in the sense I couldn't make this talk like four hours long, but then there's no point in doing that. Okay, so what's the conclusion? Basically, well, there's a really good book you can again find at the references. It's called How to Think Like Sherlock Holmes. And three things, all right, to think or learn about anything. Motivation is point number one. That is, you should be willing to think and learn about the topic that interests you. Tip, read the biographies of famous contributors in our field. Get inspired or motivated. Number two, mindfulness. Okay, in the case of Maxwell's equations, be careful of the units. Then to use dot product, cross product, differential form, integral form. Uh, another example, when we talk about complex numbers, uh, do we add complex numbers in polar form or is it easier or preferable to add complex numbers in standard form? In general, when we talk about vectors, can a scalar equal a vector? So I can be very mindful of the equations you write. 
Finally, practice, practice, practice. Problems, problems, problems. For example, the Indian education system is real. However, blind memorization is disastrous and of course it's boring, tiring, etc. Bottom line is, look at the arrows. Uh, motivation, mindfulness and practice are the keys to thinking and learning about anything. Well, that's about it. So, in conclusion, this talk focused on how to think and learn, particularly using Maxwell's equations. However, the general rule of thumb is motivation, mindfulness, and practice. Now, uh, just to tell my employer why you want to attend MSOE as opposed to UW Madison or University of Berkeley or Harvard, because we professors at MSOE work with undergraduates on getting the best possible research opportunities and best internships slash job without the cloud of tenure or graduate student commitments. And the reason why I actually mention this is not to sell my employer alone. It's, this is what motivated me, that is my work at MSOE to actually make this talk. Like, yeah, it's also, like I said in the beginning, uh, there is this uh, misplaced fear in students, but I didn't have a chance to sample this misplaced fear, if you will, till I came to a primarily undergraduate institution. Now, please give me feedback via email, mudaswami at msoe.edu. This email is also in the first slide of this talk. And again, that's about it. If you want to learn more about Maxwell's equations, please purchase references two and three. Uh, it is well worth your effort. These are textbooks on Maxwell's equations. And you, if you want a treasure trove of problems, not only on Maxwell's equations, in general physics, please purchase Iridol. Uh, good luck.